both of you and then one on each of you. Mm -hmm. My name is Keith Cannon. I was diagnosed uh, probably about three and a half years ago. I was getting up in age and, uh, <laughs> and I was getting tired and my wife mentioned I'd go to uh, get some blood work done. So I got some blood work done and PSA came back probably it was at around a four, four, a four or five and it was elevated and contacted Dr. Meehan. In the beginning we really didn't know what he had. He came in with a PSA that was high and it's typically the first step in screening. We check blood work. Yeah. And PSA, though, is, is just not the most accurate test. The accuracy on it is around 60%. It, it can be misleading. PSA can be elevated for a variety of reasons, from in a large prostate to prostate inflammation to prostate cancer to a combination of all those. So our first step in the workup was to obtain an MRI. And I think, you know, for us, we kind of look at that as like a manogram where we do some initial screen and we can see how big the prostate is and look inside and see if there's areas of concern for cancer. Yeah. So we, we got an MRI and it showed a region, an area of interest that kind of looked like cancer. And then the next step after that was to do a targeted biopsy, an MRI fusion biopsy, and to, to retrieve some of those cells. And we send it off to a pathologist. They look under a microscope and we go from there, and, you know. And, and in Keith's case, we found that it indeed was prostate cancer. It all hits you at once. You know, to be my age, I didn't think I would think cancer would be when you later on in life. But yeah, it, it hit me pretty. It's this eye-opening experience. But I know I was in good hands. Kind of really have to put all the cards on the table before you play your hand. You got to look at everything. And in Keith's case. You know, his cancer wasn't super aggressive, mm -hmm. but you're you're actually young when it compares to patients with prostate cancer. <laughs> yeah. You know, the average age of diagnosis is a guy in, in their late 60s, mm -hmm. but one out of eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lives. So we are catching a lot of guys that are younger in their 40s and even in their 50s. And, you know, in the United States, one out of 52 oh, men in their 50s will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. And it makes me a little more concerned because you know, you got a long life ahead of you. And, you know, traditional options include watching it, active surveillance, yeah. or traditional treatments like surgery or radiation. Mm -hmm. There's different types of radiation, but for somebody as young as you, you know, it's it's it becomes a little more concerning because this is something we have to really closely follow if we're gonna watch it, or you know, if we make a, a treatment decision there's a lot of side effects associated with that especially for a guy you know as young as yourself that can really uh, change your quality of life yeah you know I was a little scared at first but I, he said don't worry and just keep well we'll watch the PSA and for a while it was staying steady but the last test it jumped up a, a little bit and that's when it really started to worry a little bit now, there's been a recent paradigm shift from radical treatment where you treat the entire prostate to focal therapy where you can treat just parts of the prostate with cancer. And having that targeted approach, we're able to preserve the important structures in the prostate has vast improvements over, over what we've seen before. This is a, a procedure where the, the risk of urinary leakage or incontinence is extremely low. And even the risk of erectile dysfunction is a lot less than you see with the traditional treatments. So yeah, we use we use Tulsa Pro. And what, what Tulsa Pro is, it uses directional ultrasound to heat up the prostate under the direction of an MRI. So Keith was actually in an MRI machine with a device inside him. There's no incisions, there's no cutting. It goes through the urethra and you have a, a cooling mechanism in the rectum. And then you can see everything on MRI and the device is actually a robot that moves and, and, and follows the contours that we, we, we tell it to do through a computer. It is as precise as can be. And with RadNet, we're fortunate to, to combine with a radiologist and myself, and we work in tandem together to look at the MRI, to strategize where we're gonna treat and what we're gonna preserve. It's pretty cool. It's one of the only treatments out there that you can treat the entire prostate really effectively or just parts of it. So I think the, the paradigm shift is really with 
Focal therapy, treating just the areas of cancer and leaving the rest of the tissue that's normal behind, that has far less side effects than we've seen before. The hardest thing was the catheter. <laughs> that was the most painful part of it. The procedure itself was very, just very minor, just a little discomfort. But overall, it was very, very easy. When you needed to go to the bathroom, uh, it was kind of tough at first, yeah. But over time, he said, T give it three months. And sure enough, over three months, it was just like a bell went off. It was okay, it's, this gets a lot better. Yeah, it's nice. After the procedure, we had a blood test and my PSA, I couldn't believe the number. It was not even, not even a one. Was it a point, what was the? 0 0.3. Zero, yeah, I, yeah, I was just floored with that, yeah. I really believe this is gonna be the standard of care in the future. You know, we're really fortunate to have this technology now. It just came out in 2019 when it first launched. I was flying my patients to California, to Beverly Hills, to be treated at a RadNet facility. And we onboarded this technology to Arizona, to Phoenix. We're gonna bring it here to the East Valley really shortly. And I think it's, it's just phenomenal. I really feel blessed that, you know, we're able to bring that technology here to be part of a trial and, you know, be able to bring Keith into that. You know, for myself, this is how I would want to be treated. And this is the treatment that I would choose if I had prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is so common. We think most men get it as they age. There are forms of prostate cancer that are more aggressive. So I think the first thing to do is really figure out how aggressive is your cancer. Do everything we can to risk stratify it and to look at it and then take your time and explore all the options. Don't come, don't make any rash decisions. For a lot of men, active surveillance is gonna be a great option where you just sit back and watch it and watch it very closely. And if we can kick the can down the road and, and delay treatment to another time, that's the best if we can do that in a safe in a safe way. But some men have more aggressive cancers that need to be treated. So I would explore your options, do your research, talk to your urologist, get a second opinion, talk to multiple urologists, really, look and see what's out there and find the right decision for you. We need to screen men earlier. Men need to take charge of their health. I think all men in their 50s should have a PSA. My primary care was kind of, he scared me at first. He says, you know, don't even worry about your PSA right now. And I was like, you're young. But, and I, that's when I called Dr. Meehan and he really eased me up a little bit with that and educated me what I need to listen to and, and how to, to go forth and had a plan, a good plan for me. No, I think it's great. I, I, I'm i just genuinely happy for you. Hmm. And I'm glad that, that it's worked out oh, as it's, well as it it's has. It's been a blessing. Yeah. I'm very lucky.